Yo, what's good people? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've been asked many times and been messaged many times about doing a full bike check in some sort of detail. So that's what we're going to do today. So what you see here is my Forbidden Druid. This is a size large, carbon frame, front and rear. Super sleek, nice uh, finishing on it. Yeah, frame's a perfect size for me. I'm 5 foot 11 and yeah, I wouldn't go any smaller and I wouldn't go a size up. So it fits perfect for me. Uh, what we'll talk about first is we'll talk about the suspension. So up front I'm running Fox 36 Elite Performance Forks. Um, these are just what Fox have given me and honestly I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the Kashima and the Elite Performance uh, with the black coat in, on the stanchions. Uh, they've been really, really good. Um, for you guys, I know you'll probably want to know my settings, so I have them here. Uh, these forks are 150mm of travel, uh, low speed compression 11, high speed compression 14, low speed rebound 11, high speed rebound 5, and I run 74 psi in the fork at the front with one volume spacer as well. For the rear, I have the Fox DHX2 coil shock. Uh, this has all the adjustment that I need on it, so uh, it's been really straightforward to get set up. I have bounced between a 450 spring and a 400 spring. Currently this is a 450, I feel like it sits up a little bit better in the travel and doesn't blow through it as quick. Um, for me, the coil shock, there's just way more sensitivity in it and it doesn't heat up as fast as an air shock does, it stays consistent uh, no matter how long the trail. So really stoked on that. So yeah, uh, stoked to be on Fox suspension again, really thankful for that and yeah, this stuff's been working awesome. So next we'll go on to the wheels. These are E13's LG1 Carbon R, uh, the Enduro wheel set. For me, I've always really enjoyed carbon wheels, just the feel that they give, the nimbleness, they give like a snappy feeling. So if I want to change direction fast, uh, they just seem to change that direction much quicker than an, all, an alloy wheel. Not to mention the weight, I like a lighter wheel. So yeah, I've had absolutely no issues with them, really enjoyed using them. So yeah, stoked on, stoked on the wheels for sure. Cranks, I'm on the E13 LG1 carbon cranks as well. E13 are quite a big part of my program this year, supplying a fair bit on the bike. Um, really enjoy the cranks. Uh, nice that they come with these little uh, plastic boots for the end of the cranks, just to save any sort of chips or damage being done to your cranks if you're riding. E13, I'm running their chain ring. So this right here is a 36 tooth. Kind of big. Um, Bigger than what I have run in the past. Past couple of years I've been on a 32 or a 34 tooth chain ring. So gone up to the 36 for this, but yeah, been good so far. Uh, they've been really good support and cool to have them on board the program this year. Next up, we'll move to the cockpit. So I'm running the Renthal Fat Bar Carbon 35 and these are a 30 mil rise. I do have spare uh, 40 mil rise, but naturally, 30 mil rise has just been kind of my go-to and I've really sort of enjoyed that. So really like the sweep of these bars. Uh, I'll have to get myself a set of the black, full black. I think that would look wicked on the bike. But for now, these look sick. These have been amazing. Really enjoyed them. For the stem, this is the Renthal Apex stem, 35 with a 40 mil reach. Um, kind of like a long stem. Uh, I do have a shorter one, but I just haven't tried it out yet. So, I mean, it could be something for the future for me to try as a high rise bar and a short stem. The reason I run kind of a high rise bar and a lot of spacers under my stem uh, is because years ago when I broke my elbow, uh, I eventually, once I was all good and recovered, uh, I gained quite a lot of movement back, but not full movement. So, for example, right now, like, that's my good arm stretched fully and this is my, you know, I just, I can't straighten my left elbow anymore. So I've had to compensate a little bit and now I run more stack under the stem than I ever have just to keep the front end raised up a bit and bring it closer to me. Uh, I had to adapt my riding over the years and 
Totally used to it, I don't even think about it anymore. On to the brakes. I'm running the TRP DHR brakes. So you've probably seen these on Gwyn's bike, Angel Suarez, Brandon's. Super powerful, amazing modulation. Like, since I've got the bigger rotors on now, which are the 223s, uh, man, I wouldn't go back to a 203 rotor or even smaller than that. I'm completely sold on these. They're not much extra weight and yeah, they just don't seem to heat up as fast and there's, I've had no brake fade and yeah, they've been super, super good. And yeah, they've been amazing, honestly. Uh, I really like the adjustment as well on the lever. It's just a little knob that you can turn and brings the lever closer uh, to wherever you want to suit. So yeah, buzzing on the brakes. Big shout out to Sean and the guys at TRP for who can be up this year. Next, we'll move on to the tires. So Maxis are on board again this year. There was a huge thing for me was to have a tire that I knew was reliable, durable, and had a good variety of compound and different treads. Maxis certainly do that. Front and rear right now are the Asagai, and these are, I believe, bear with me. It's pretty bad that I have to check what I run on my bike, but these are 2.5 WT, so um, and they are downhill casing. So I run downhill casing front and rear just for a little bit more protection. Um, I really like the compound of these tires and the tread pattern on them. I think they're not bad for fast rolling. I run them mainly because I feel like I excel in corners and these have good side knobs for grip so I like to be able to get the bike cranked over and have that confidence that I can gain time uh, by cornering, uh, I feel like it's one of my strengths. So yeah, buzzing on the on the tyre combo, I have been trying the Dissector out which is a slightly faster rolling tyre, if I'll give me one second. So this is a Maxxis dissector, slightly uh, less aggressive, much flatter pattern in the middle, more like a high roller. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed using the dissector for the fast roll and stuff. It makes a huge difference. So I think if I was in a race that it was dry and fairly bike parky, and loose, I would probably use that tire in the rear. What we'll move on to next. So next up is FDG. FDG are making a good push at their saddle and dropper range this year. This is the FDG Telus dropper, 170mm. Fits absolutely perfect with the size of my bike and yeah, I seem to have a real sweet spot with uh, the height that I have on it at the moment. This is the Bel Air V3, amazing colorway. Uh, you know, the purple doesn't go with really anything on the bike, but um, I dig it, I think it looks good. This is one of their smaller ones. Uh, I prefer a smaller saddle and yeah, it's, it's lightweight, looks good and it has padding in the right area. Um, so yeah, stoked on that. The lever on the Telus has to be, and for me it is the most easiest and smoothest dropper lever I've ever pushed in my life. I mean, you just have to touch it ever so slightly and it's sensitive enough just to go whoosh. And it's not like other dropper posts where you have to like really push it to, to get the dropper to come up. Um, in fact, I'll show you, kind of. Um, it's just smooth and maybe a little bit dry I'll have to do something about that I'll get serviced or something I almost forgot back to the subject of the tires and the wheels the pressures I run here are 27 in the rear and 22 in the front uh, I tend to run like I think everyone seems to run a higher pressure in the rear for rolling speed um, and maybe the hits uh, and a softer pressure up front for front end grip um, they are all that's always kind of be my go-to uh, pressures. They'll sometimes uh, change like maybe a PSI or two, but from a wet 
from wet conditions to dry conditions, they're honestly the same. I wouldn't uh, change them really. Uh, I think once you ride something that you're used to for long enough, you just kind of adapt to it and you just find a setting that works for all different types of terrain and conditions. Overall, I am really, really pumped on the bike. Uh, honestly, I can't say enough about it. Like, it has been unreal. Um, you would never think that this is a 130 travel bike. Like, that's one thing that I forgot to mention with the shock. It's only 130 travel in the rear, but like, hand on my heart, I swear, when I'm riding it, I never, like, I just think it's a full-blown enduro bike. Like, it's mad. And I think that's a big bit of credit to Owen at Forbidden Bikes that's designed it and, you know, really kind of squeezed as much as he can out of the geometry for the bike and for it to allow it to work the way it does. Um, and I think from some of the clips and the video that we posted when this release came out, like, it shows how capable the bike is. Um, and a lot of people have asked me, you know, is, would you race this bike at EWS? Is, it's not enough. Sure it's enough. I would, you know, I would race this 100%. It's not really that much about the travel, it's what you do with it. And, and you know, all bikes tend to be somewhat different, but then they're kind of, some of them are the same too, but I feel like this is very unique. And yeah, you just have to look at the idler pulley and the way the chain is and, you know, go on their website and read up on how this works. I would like to explain it to you right now, but uh, this is just a bike check and I'm not gonna get into too much into the details, but hit up the website, read a little bit about the bike, and yeah, you'll probably have a much better understanding of why is the chain like that. <laughs> also, running Crank Brothers this year, it's been, I don't know, I'd almost say 10 years since I ran Crank Brothers, but stoked to be back with them. These are the mallet downhills. I tend to just go for the heavier, uh, more durable pedal, that's what I think they are. And uh, yeah, been bomb proof, took a couple hits to them so far. Yeah, they've been really good. One little tip is they come with pins. And when I got the pedals brand new and I went out riding, the pins almost wouldn't allow me to clip into my shoe. But I then noticed that they were adjustable and you could screw them all the way into the pedal. So I've made the pins completely flush with the pedal so that I have no pins to grip on, it's just the platform and I just kind of like that. I like it kind of, if I come unclipped, I just feel like I'm pretty good at finding my place back again on, 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 the, on, the, on the cleat and straight back in. So also up front running the One Up Components EDC tool. I've ran these for a few years now and it is a must have. Like if you don't have one of these tools in your bike, what are you doing? Seriously get one, they're cheap. They're worth it. Means that you're well prepared in the trails as well. I have some chain links in here, multi-tool, um, and sometimes I'll screw a CO2 into the bottom up here. Um, so yeah, just keeps things tidy and out of the way and means I don't have to carry a multi-tool on my back or like strap it to my frame. Also keeping the mud out of my face every single day of the year, it seems, living in Scotland is Mudhugger. Uh, they have designed a custom graphic for this one, so pretty stoked on it and has all well, most of my sponsors on there. So hit them up if you're looking for a mud guard that yeah stops the shit getting in your eyes. And also for me, what is really important to have a mud guard this big um, is for when I'm doing my POV stuff and shooting you know videos or doing my YouTube stuff. I have my GoPro on the chin of my helmet, so you're kind of like fairly low down, and this massively helps stop uh, and this massively helps mud from flicking up onto the lens of the camera and I almost have you know very rarely had any mud on the lens for my videos so yeah credit to those guys um, hit them up follow them on Instagram whatever and uh, yeah get yourself one for sure you won't regret it and for valves this year Muckoff are doing the valves these are just uh, straight black ones but I see that they do like an iridescent, is it iridescent I think? Like a jet fuel sort of coloured and I need to get myself a set of them. Yeah they've been easy to install and absolutely no leaks so yeah pumped with them. Running the Renthal grips these are ultra tacky like a sticky grip but I think I'm due to change these out pretty soon. They went from white to brown so <laughs> I get a black set on there at some point. Uh, I think I've pretty much covered everything on the bike Hopefully, if I've missed anything, you guys can get in the comments 
and ask me questions, let me know what I missed and I'll be happy to try and answer. Make sure you give the video a like. If you aren't subscribed already, please do. Massively helps. Hope you enjoyed this bike check. Peace out. See you in the next video. Have a good one.